Universal Grammar? Okay, briefly. I always cringe when I see these articles, you know, Noam Chomsky debunked. Because they're invariably written by these grad student uh, conservatives that are just falling over themselves to get the slot in history that proved that fucking communist wrong. Debunking Noam Chomsky seems to mean debunking communism nowadays. And it seems to be that there's all these people that think that if they can prove that universal grammar is wrong, then capitalism wins. It's absurd, but that's, you know. And, you know, they're driven by this, and so they invariably miss the point. Now, of course, the idea is wrong on some level, right? It's an old idea. And as an old idea, it is tied to a previous era with a previous understanding of things. You could say that Newton was wrong, but we still use his ideas, right? But how wrong it is depends on how specific you get about it. And if you maintain a certain abstraction, it's actually somewhat of an impossible to argue with tautology. I, I hope you see what I did there. So, so if you want to get really granular and start talking about the automata theory and Turing machines, you're eventually going to run out to the reality that our brain is almost certainly a nonlinear computing machine. It may not be exactly what we think of when we think of a quantum computer, although we can be certain that the chemical reactions that exist in our head need to be analyzed on a quantum level in order to be understood. So no, our brain isn't a Turing machine. We can be pretty confident in that point. That that understanding of how our brain works is too is too simple. Okay? And it follows that the computational theory he used is poorly applied to biological processes, which means these recursive formulas can't be exactly right, because our brains are a different kind of computer. So I think we can all agree that Chomsky's idea of a universal grammar is too simple. But he wrote it, and he wrote it a long time ago, before we knew that it was too simple. So, you know, maybe we can be a little bit um, uh, reasonable here in, in how we analyze it, right? And it doesn't necessarily mean that his ideas are wrong, it just means that they're too simple. And I would suggest that we need to generalize them, okay? One of these things that these drooling conservatives will throw at you is the observation that you can find a handful of languages scattered in distant parts of the world that don't follow the rules. You know, you can find a, you know, an indigenous tribe in the Amazon that doesn't, you know. And it's a counterexample, so therefore communism is wrong, go buy stuff. I would suggest that a generalized theory based on some kind of quantum theory of computation would actually absorb all of these languages, right? So... The fact that you found a counterexample doesn't mean that you need to throw this whole idea out the window. What it means is that maybe his idea is based on a simple theory, and because it's built on a simple theory of computation, it's not um, robust enough to take everything in. The fact that this counterexample exists, you know, in uh, you know somewhere deep in the African rainforest doesn't, I mean, it, it still works pretty well for 99% of the languages that you're going to come across, right? Is that just a coincidence? Probably not, no. But again, our brains, see, it, it, it sounds kind of ridiculous and naive at this point in 2016 to suggest that our brains are you know, finite state machines, or Turing machines, or these kinds of very simple kinds of computers. Right? That sounds ridiculous at this point in history. It didn't when he wrote it. But if we acknowledge that it is ridiculous to think that our brains are that, you know, can be accurately modeled with that simple of a computer, then, I mean, it's... It's almost obvious that, that we're going to find a counterexample. But just as obvious that if we can, you know, expand the theory a little bit, we're going to get... We're going to get something more robust that can take all of these ideas in. But in order to do that, we have to know how our brains work first, right? 
we can run off all of these different abstract concepts of what a computer is and then, you know, just kind of blindly apply them and hope one sticks. But ultimately, I mean, we're going to find multiple abstract concepts of the computer that are going to fit every, fit every language, eventually. I mean, why are we just shooting darts in the dark like this, right? Rather, the wise thing to do right now is acknowledge that, okay, we don't know exactly how our brains process information yet. We know that our brains are more complicated than a Turing machine, but we don't know exactly what that means. That doesn't mean we need to throw away the idea that our brains are computers. I still think it's a good guess that our brains are pretty much the same thing as computers. But I also think that we need to leave Turing models in the past and embrace something different altogether. A more complex model. A more complex kind of computer to model our brains with. And then once you've done that, well, it's going to require a lot of observing. This is an empirical question, which is going to require a lot of technology that's designed for that observing. But once we've figured that out, once we've resolved that empirical process of what kind of computer our brains emulate most, uh, most accurately, once we've figured out how our brain processes information, then we can start talking about building a new theory of universal grammar within that theoretical framework. In the meantime, the realization that our brains are not Turing machines reduces, or finite state machines, reduces universal grammar to its most simple formulation. There's a part of our brain that deals with language. If you take away the specific kind of computer, then that's what's left. Which is, I mean, how do you even start to argue with that, right? Of course there's a part of our brain that deals with language. Therefore communism is right. It's, you've got nothing to lose but your chance. So let's be careful before we go Chomsky debunked. I, I think his idea is probably right. His idea is probably right. It's the underlying theory that he built it on that needs some work. And I don't have a good idea. Because I think it's an empirical question. And I think we need to study that. Empirically. <laughs>